did you know that 6% of the global population has a shopping addiction? And 90% of that is women. Hey everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Isabel Varela and for today's topic, we're gonna be looking at why we shop. We shop for groceries, we shop for electronics, we shop for houseware, and we also shop for clothing. And have you ever thought about why we really shop, especially when it comes to clothing? So for today, I'm gonna to be covering three things. One, I'm gonna be talking about why people shop. Two, I'm gonna be sharing my personal journey on why I was shopping and impulse buying. And three, I'm gonna cover tips and tricks on how to slow down your spending, slow down your shopping habit, and stay till the end because I have a bonus for you. Topic number one, why people shop. So there was a survey done by ING Direct and Capital Bank on a thousand women and their spending habits. Here are the top 10 reasons women go on shopping sprees. 79% of the women said they wanted to cheer themselves up. Two, 75% of the women wanted to treat others. Three, 61% of the women wanted to feel better and look better. Four, 61% of the women were feeling a bit low. Five, 53% of the women we're feeling happy. Six, 52% of the women wanted to impress others. Seven, 40% of the women felt depressed. Eight, 34% of the women said that things were really going well with their partner. Nine, 33% of the women felt unattractive. And 10, 31% of the women felt anxious and worried. Do you hear anything in common with all of these women? Yes, it was based on emotions. When we do shop, we go into this euphoric state. We get a hit of endorphins, we get a hit of dopamine. We get that instant gratification. Unfortunately, we can get hooked to that feeling. And that is when Shopping addiction, compulsive buying, impulsive buying, shopaholism can occur. And look, I'm not saying that shopping is bad because we need clothing. I'm here to talk about the importance of understanding the intention of why we're shopping. Because look, we cannot fill a spiritual void with material things. And learn from my mistakes. Those 300 pairs of shoes that I had in my closet never filled a spiritual void. I got that quick instant gratification, but only for a short term, because then I would feel guilty. I would get buyer's remorse, and then I would have to deal with the consequences of continually racking up my credit card debt. Topic number two, why I shopped. So in the beginning of my fashion addiction, all the way to fashion advocate journey, I shop for several reasons. I looked at clothing as an art form. I love creating new styles. And I also love the attention that I would get whenever I would wear extreme outfits. And living in a small town of about 80,000 people, whenever I would walk into an Applebee's, picture this, five inch rainbow platform shoes with teal Janko jeans, a crop top in red with an asymmetrical mullet. My friends, the people in Applebee's would give me all kinds of looks, whether it be positive or negative. I got a bunch of this, I got this, and I got, what in the Sam hell she wearing? <laughs> I crave that pseudo validation and that pseudo love because that was my drug. 
And I call it pseudo validation and pseudo love because it's a love that's coming from the exterior and not for myself. My all time favorite feeling was a hit of dopamine that I would get whenever I would go shopping. It was my perfect drug. And if you haven't seen that YouTube video, I will link it down below. Shopping was my job. I would plan out all the stores that I would go to. I already knew the layout of the land because I had been there so many times. Then as soon as I would go into the store, the first hit of dopamine would come. I would get this rush of energy and sift through all the racks, piling and piling clothes on both of my arms until I reached the gar uh, until I reached the dressing rooms filled with clothing to try on. Then I would get the second half of dopamine in the dressing room, trying on all different outfits, even knowing that my cards were pretty much maxed out. I would rationalize with myself and say, well, I do need another pair of black shoes, even though I already have 22 of them, but these black shoes are different. Or I need this shirt to go with my other black denim jeans. I always knew that shopping could make me feel better, but only for a short amount of time. And once that wore off, I would go through my same cycle again, because the truth was I was insecure. I hated what I looked like. I wasn't happy, I was depressed, I was constantly having a lot of negative self-talk and I would shop when I was sad, angry, lonely, bored, everything. And my intention behind why I was shopping was more negative than positive. Which brings me to topic number three. I'm gonna be sharing some tips and tricks that I use during my fashion addiction journey. And these are also things that I offer to my life coaching students to help them through their own journey to heal. And if any of these things sound familiar, if you're questioning your spending habits, if you're seeing that you're shopping too much, you're not alone and that's why I am here. Once we realize and admit that we have a problem, that's when we can start to make a plan of action. I believe that we are capable of changing our negative behaviors, intentions, actions, and thoughts to more positive ones. Because look, if I can do this, so can you. And now my work, I teach women how to overcome fashion addiction by increasing their self-love, self-respect, and to live more sustainably. I wanna normalize talking about fashion addiction because did you know that 6% of the global population has a shopping addiction and 90% of that is women. And yes, I get it. We're constantly being bombarded with marketing, with advertisement. If you buy this, you'll look like this. If you wear this, you'll look like your favorite person, but we have a choice to listen or to not listen. We have a choice to buy or to not buy. And one of my favorite quotes is, we buy things we don't need with the money that we don't have to impress people that really don't care. And we only wear 20% of our clothing 80% of the time. So do we really need to buy something new for a wardrobe? One thing that I offer to my life coaching students and something that I personally used and helped me along my journey was tracking down your spending. So you would write down how many times you're shopping in a month, how much you're spending each time, what you're buying, and most importantly, why. So I'm actually gonna read an example from when I first started tracking my own spending. So the first week, I said, I am shopping today because I need a new scarf and it's cold outside in New York and I needed to go with my black coat but I do have four other scarves that kind of match my black coat, but I really need this one because it goes better with this coat and then it'll look really great with that new dress that I'm about to buy as well. Now, it was difficult, it was scary, but the more that I became honest with myself, the more that I shared my truth, the more that I healed. So by the third week, 
I wrote, I am shopping today because I am sad. The date with a potential boyfriend did not go well. I felt ugly, but I really wanted those Margiela shoes that were on sale. But I know these shoes are gonna make me feel better, even if it's just for a little bit. I saw the change in myself as I kept writing down what I was spending. And the more that I kept building my self-love, my self-respect, my craving for dopamine, my craving for shopping started to decrease. I also committed to not shopping for almost two years. I started to build a better relationship with myself and my clothing, which also helped the planet all in the same time. And look, I believe that this is possible for everyone. Again, if any of these things sound familiar, you're not alone. Please reach out to me. You can email me and I have that down in the description box below. And I would love to hear from you in the comments. What's something else that you would like me to share with you? Because I am an open book and I believe that vulnerability is a superpower. And I hope to empower others to know that they too can share about the real things that are really going on in our lives. And now for the bonus, I am offering you a free self-love guide that I have created. I'm going to be linking that down below in the description box. And what it is, it is five simple questions that you ask yourself each month. You rate yourself and it's a way to take accountability of your actions and it's a way to start building your self-love. It's quick, but it's deep. And each time that we work on our mental health, we build our self-love, we build self-respect. What else could you ask for? See you soon. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell so you stay up to date whenever I release new videos every week. See you soon.